Hello, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. Now I'm going to start off today's video by asking you a question. Have you ever thought about where your money goes when you buy a bottle of wine? That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. We're going to be taking a look at exactly how your money is broken down when you purchase a bottle of wine. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm the Grape Explorer. On this channel, I do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tastings. So if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. This to me is a really interesting subject. You know, you pay five pounds for a bottle, you pay 10 pounds for a bottle. But what does that actually mean in terms of where the money has been spent on the journey from the wines being produced to ending up on the shelves in the shops? What I'm gonna be doing today is trying to give you a visual representation of what that actually looks like. But before I start to do that, let me tell you a little bit about where that money is spent. So naturally, the first place that the money invested is into the wine itself. That's the vineyard, the wine, it pays the employees who've worked the vineyards, harvested the berries, and it goes right through to the workers in the winery as well. And then once we've created that wine, we then need to package that wine. So money then goes into the bottles, the labeling, the enclosures, whether it's corks or screw cap. You then of course have transport costs. You know, you need to be able to get that wine to the end user. And for many people, that will mean road freight, air freight as well. So you've got all of the logistical elements of getting the wine to its final destination. Now in today's video, I am focusing on wines that are being imported. And of course, I'm basing this on UK prices. So the next thing that our money goes towards is the excise duty, the cost to import those goods into the country. Once they've arrived in the country and before they go onto the shop shelves, they're then subject to further tax. You may know this as sales tax, service added tax, value added tax is how we know it here in the UK. And it's a levy that's complied. It's like a consumption tax that's added to certain goods. And finally, of course, the stores that are selling the produce put their own margin onto the bottle of wine as well. They need to be able to make a profit in order to operate. And so there are six key considerations that take us from vineyard through to shops before you buy it. So what does it actually mean for what's in your glass? Well, I'm gonna take the example of a five pound bottle. Let's assume this is a five pound bottle of wine. How is this gonna be broken down so that you can see where the money is spent? Now obviously I'm not gonna make you watch me pour all of these glasses individually, so I may have to speed up some of the footage or cut it. But let's get started first off with the store margin on a five pound bottle. Here we are then, this is our store margin on a five pound bottle of wine. Typically it's around 20, 21%. And in this glass, this represents 160 milliliters from a 750 milliliter bottle. Apologies to those of you who only work in Imperial, I'm going metric on you today. So already you can see that over 20% of your money has actually just gone to the store margin itself. Now let's move on to some of those pesky taxes that we have to pay. This one here, this represents our value added tax, the consumption tax, which you may know in your country as a good service tax or sales tax. And right now here in the UK on a five pound bottle, that equates to just under 17% of the bottle goes to the sales tax, the value added tax. Now this bottle has been imported from southeastern Australia. So the next thing we're gonna look at is our excise duty, the cost to import that wine. Excise duty, notice how much there is. Okay. So here's the cost to import the wine from a five pound bottle. So, so far you're seeing store margin and taxes at the moment. Makes you wonder what's actually gonna be left over for wine itself. Next, we're gonna move on to the logistics. So the cost of actually bringing that wine through transportation, it would have been air freight in the case of this particular bottle, how much has that cost? Now, of course, you're not just shipping one bottle at a time, you're shipping them in bulk, hundreds of thousands of bottles. Nevertheless, there is still a cost associated. So there we go, that is the cost to actually bring the wines from their place of origin, in this case, Australia, over to the UK. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is the cost of the packaging. Now again, packaging is something where you would buy the bottles, buy the corks, get all the printing done for the labels. You're able to do that in bulk, so of course that means that costs can be quite greatly reduced. And there we are, that is the cost for our packaging, which leaves us with one last thing, 
our wine itself. Now you've probably noticed that this glass is slightly different to the, all the other glasses. I actually smashed the glass before I came on camera. It's a bit embarrassing to be honest. Okay, and here we go. The rest of it is our wine. So what's left for wine, you might ask? Well, just 6.2% out of a 750 milliliter bottle is all that is left. That represents the investment in the vineyard, the winery pays for all of the workers, uh, all of the work that's done on the harvest throughout the growing season. So when you spend five pounds on a bottle, you're not even getting 10% of the value invested in the wine. It actually only works out at around 30 pence per bottle. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and pour all these back into the bottle. I've made a horrific mess in here. But I'm then going to assume that this is a £10 bottle so that you can see the price comparison. So store margin, of course the price of the wine has gone up which means the store is going to be able to charge a little bit more. And this would represent nearly 30% of a £10 bottle of wine going into the margin for the store. Next up we've got our value added tax. Which here in the UK as I say was 20% so that the calculation would be the same as it would be on a five pound bottle, it's still 20% of whatever the value of the bottle is. So there's our value added tax. Next up, we've got our cost to import, our excise duty. Now the, the duty is, is a fixed amount. So actually, whilst it seems so high in the, in the last glass, it's still gonna be the same cost at two pounds 23 per bottle imported. 22.3% of that therefore then goes into a 10 pound bottle of wine. Next, we're gonna have our logistic and our packaging costs. Now, these are gonna remain the same, but of course that makes them less of a percentage of the final value of the bottle. So here's our logistic cost and here's our packaging cost, which means for our 10 pound bottle of wine, oh God, I'm spilling it everywhere. I made such a mess today. Which means this is our final investment in a 10 pound bottle of wine, and it actually means it's a 27% value of the bottle, 27% of a 750 milliliter bottle going into the wine itself. A huge difference from our five pound bottle. So for double the price, you're actually getting nine times the investment into the wine as the difference between the two. So when you're buying that cheaper bottle, you're really just paying for store margin and taxes, where as that ever so slightly increases, you can see massively the investment into wine. We've got our five pound bottle of wine on the left, our 10 pound bottle of wine on the right. And as you can see, it all comes down to the, the taxes that you get on those cheaper bottles. And therefore the money that's invested into the wine on a 10 pound bottle, like I say, is around nine times as much as it would be on a five pound bottle of wine. And just finally to illustrate that, I've poured my five pound bottle and my 10 pound bottle here. And it's definitely worth considering the next time you're at the tills where your money is going. And I hope you found this a really interesting insight into where your money goes when you buy a bottle of wine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. For now, I'm the Grape Explorer. Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Cheers.